Matt Walsh is obsessed with the concept of pedophilia. Often conservatives are in general. Um, <laughs> to me, it feels a little bit like projecting, but of course, a lot of that has to do with uh, their desire to appeal to the QAnon types and they have this like existential dread about women being outside of the home and not being able to monitor the kids at all times and of course then they're going to be attacked um he wanted to wade into the big bird conversation here uh here is here he is calling big bird a child molester <laughs> so <laughs> that <laughs> All right, so today we cancel Sesame Street. Uh, we could have canceled Sesame Street a week ago when Big Bird tweeted. Big Bird has a Twitter account now, but right, he tweeted it. that he'd right. just gotten the vaccine no, despite having natural... Pause it just for a sec. Just right off the get. You could keep it up. I'm only going to say it really quickly, but I thought they were anti-cancel culture. Yeah, they're saving Dr. Seuss, and now they're canceling Sesame Street. Right, I know. know it's which odd. Which children's, children's culture that I can trust anymore. Exactly. It's just weird. They, they still talk about Big Bird like they think he's just a big bird, like that can well, literally talk. Like, well, I why mean, why wouldn't Big Bird have a Twitter account? <laughs> he's not like a literal <laughs> giant bird. Uh, he, the, it, it becomes apparent that maybe, yeah, Matt Walsh is still committed to Big Bird being a real thing throughout this segment. All right, so today we cancel Sesame Street. Uh, we could have canceled Sesame Street a week ago when Big Bird tweeted. Big Bird has a Twitter account now, by the way. He tweeted that he'd uh, just gotten the vaccine despite having natural immunity from respiratory viruses due to the fact that puppets don't have respiratory systems. But I suppose if we're giving the vaccine to kids who are almost completely immune to severe COVID illness, then we might as well give it to fictional birds also. To make matters creepier, Big Bird then appeared on a CNN town hall to further push pharmaceuticals onto kids Big Bird seems to have really settled into his new role as drug dealer. Um, here's what that looked like. You know, my granny bird says that since I'm six years old, I can get the vaccine. Oh, yeah, that's right, Big Bird. But, well, uh, I have a lot of questions. Like, what is a vaccine? And does it have to be a shot? And, and will I still need to wear my mask? Those are such great questions, Big Bird. And it turns out lots of kids and families have questions, too. So over the next half hour, we're going to be answering your questions, talking with experts and giving you the information you need about vaccinations for kids. Oh, um, uh, you know what? Um, Elmo better go change. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's time for the town hall. Yay! Yay! Okay, this raises um, a number of questions. Questions like, what the hell happened to Big Bird's voice? Why does he sound like a child molester now? He, st he sounds distinctly creepy all of a sudden. And also, what kind of six-year-old is expert. watching a CNN special about vaccinations in the first place? Who is, this, who is the audience for this? You, apparently. You're apparently the audience for this. Um, yeah, why would a children's show want to naturalize the idea of vaccines? Like what, what, what kind of crazy... People? I just think Big Bird should be coming out uh, in favor of the freedom of discourse and also, you know, anti-critical race theory because that would make it a lot more sense for like what is clearly a children's cartoon that's promoting public health on a public broadcast system to, you know, like that finds its home on a public, public broadcasting uh, uh, channel would do. Yeah, you know? I mean, he says pushing pharmaceuticals onto them. I, I'd be curious what you ask your doctor about uh, ivermectin. ivermectin. Yeah, right. <laughs> would, he, would he be happy if Big Bird was? Oh golly gee, hydroxychloroquine. I'm sorry, I don't want to sound like a child I'm, molester. I'm flying over Brooklyn, and we're looking for her, Kyrie Irving's house, and we're gonna force him to take the jab. Well, that would be base. Um, but I mean, I, I, I again, how do you? One, I, I'm fascinated by his psychology and his obsession with with uh, <clears throat> him being a child molester and, and just like completely projecting that onto the situation. Uh, and apparently Big Bird's a him. I didn't know. Uh, he, he keeps anthrop anthropomorphizing uh, Big Bird and, and he calls him a puppet, but then also talks about his Twitter account and ascribes a gender to Big Bird, which I wasn't aware of. Um, but he's also a drug dealer. Again, if Big Bird... <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, was promoting ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine or whatever, you know, nonsense garbage 
pharmaceuticals that right wingers are in favor of. No, it'd just be those are our drugs. Those are our favorite drugs. So it's fine. Well, right, I got I, I, I to point this out because he said apparently Big Bird's got a Twitter account now. And listen, I know this isn't really the point, but I think it's funny. Uh, Big Bird joined Twitter before Matt Walsh did <laughs> by like a year. Oh. <laughs> Damn, he's just jealous of his uh, Big Bird's <laughs> Twitter clout, right? Right. <laughs> Oh boy, yeah, that's not the point. But I thought it was. I'm funny. a 35 year old man, and I'm gonna be uh, doing this, devoting a segment regularly to children's uh, culture, uh, and I'm gonna talk about them being creepy. But that's the thing, though. Like the right has to equate any kind of education that falls outside of the boundaries of incredibly like strict conservative education, which is creepy in you know many of the ways they project onto liberals as being pedophilic, because that's the only way they can justify like why they should be able to enforce like a strict Catholic dogma onto like schools or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I, Matt Walsh is one of the least talented of the right-wing pundits specifically coming out of the daily wire things he's he's grasping at straws a lot in a lot of ways he was uh doing some on the ground in-person work at um school board meetings throughout virginia i believe recently he keeps trying to make his moments uh viral but they're not necessarily hitting in the way that he wishes they were um so he's I mean, gonna keep going he's, he's had a history of doing this though like i think he knows that he's not talented he's always he does you know, he's not one of the, the the conservative minds that get thrown around in that world for being very smart or intelligent or well-spoken. So he knows, yeah. I'm pretty sure he realizes where his ceiling is. So he does what he can to cause this outrage. And that basically causes the, you know, that group of people who would otherwise, you know, flock to uh, the more talented conservative talkers to, uh, you know, defend Matt Walsh because he sees that he's got the libs coming after him and thus, they look at him as if he is of that level when he's not. I mean, also a lot of far right people are just generally obsessed. And we, we're seeing this with the critical race theory thing in schools too, with what they consider to be like liberal indoctrination mm -hmm. of like the kids. And, you know, that's why they're obsessed with college campuses. They would be obsessed with going to high school campuses and give, being able to give their speeches there if they that wouldn't make them seem creepy. That's why they go to school board meetings instead. And so like the obvious move of a public broadcast thing more or less puppet show to like promote what the public, you know, the United States public health position is, is, is to them a step so far outside of what they're able to do, which is like go on these kinds of like children aimed shows and promote their like weird ideology. And, you know, even though it's something as basic as vaccination, they feel like it's part of a changing tide that they're going to be unable to deal with, which I think is, again, a weird anxiety considering conservatives of, you know, varying, uh, very crossing spectrum control at basically every aspect of our government. But these little like pop culture things that they're losing ground on really bother them. Like now they have like the, the first Asian American puppet. They're going to be mad about that too. Ways he was uh, doing some on the ground in person work at um, school board meetings throughout Virginia, I believe recently. He keeps trying to make his moments. They're not necessarily hitting in the way that he wishes they were. Um, so he's I mean, going.